Hello everyone, welcome back. As you can see, I'm going to be doing Mission 3 here. I've already done Mission 1 and 2, so if you want to go back and see those, then uh, just go on my channel. I might actually put little things in there to click on it on the video to take you to those videos. That seems like it'll be a little easier to get around. One thing I'm going to point out in this video is that there is a costume area, which makes me very happy, because that means you will be having costumes later on. And I have my fingers crossed for the classic Virgil, like they did with classic Dante. Oh, I have, I have an upgrade point. Nice. I actually went and replayed the first few missions. Well, well not first few missions. The first two missions a few times. So I have some uh, more upgrades here. And I am really good now with all the things that I have. So I will show you all that stuff when I get to it. Uh, upgrade Slasher. Might as well. Something interesting I noticed is... I won't go back and show it just to save time. But if you... If you upgrade it all the way on certain attacks, the final attack will actually embed a sword into the enemy. And what that means is if you normally shoot a sword into an enemy and then you press the angel pull or angel lift, you don't have to fire a sword again. The sword already in them will pull them to you or you pull them or you pull to them. So what that does, if you finish a combo and the sword's in them, you can instantly use that like ability to pull them. I'll let you listen to this part here. What I find very interesting with the story here... Oh, well, I guess I'll let these guys talk now. <laughs> Welcome to hell, brother. I don't have a brother anymore. It's you. You know, I was the one running away, living in the slums. You enjoyed a comfortable life. Look who's on top now. You don't belong anywhere. Guess that's why you're here. Yeah, it could be that, too. Just knocked him clear across there. As you see, there's Dante right there. <laughs> That's funny. That's actually what Dante did in DMC4. It's probably a little homage there. But yeah, as I explained in my earlier videos, or if you've been watching them already, that is not really Dante. That's just the corrupt side of Virgil, like trying to make him hate everything that he used to love. So now, it used to be Cat for Mission 2, and now it moved on to Dante. So now he has to hate Dante, and then after that, he'll probably move on to someone else. I can't think of who else it would be, because he hasn't really talked to anyone else in the story. Maybe Phineas, I don't know. And no, not Phineas and Ferb. I mean Phineas from the Overture levels with Bob Barbus and all that. Oh, hell fragment up here. Nice. Yeah, as I mentioned... Oh, again, what I was saying about the story is that... Oh, demon mode. Nice. What I was saying about the story is interesting is that in this one, instead of being corrupted by Mundus or just having a like need for power the whole time, it's almost as if he was actually a good guy in the main story. Like, as if he legitimately thought that the only way to protect humans is to enslave them. And now, it's like the corrupt side. Well, not not exactly in those kind of words. But the only way to protect them is to protect them from themselves and, like, take away their power. Which, I guess, if you think about in a certain way, if they don't have the ability to fight each other, then I guess they will be safer. But I guess that's the logic that Virgil is going behind. But now it seems as if the corrupt side of him is showing up. That's always been there. And now he's kind of seeing it from a different angle. Like, he's, he's just wanting power now. Like, he wants to enslave them just for the simple fact of enslaving them. Because on the final mission, he seemed very, like, nonchalant about it. Like, he was so, oh, yeah, let's just take them over. What? I don't see what the big deal is. Like, he wasn't at all surprised when he told them. He was just saying it matter-of-factly. Like, yeah, this is what we need to do. What about it? <laughs> so it makes me think that he legitimately thought that was the right way and that he wasn't doing it for evil purposes. But now, it seems like the opposite. Now he's trying to, to uh, just become an evil person. Jump canceling. Nice there. Ugh. People will recognize that kick from the 
boss fight with him and from DMC3. Can you charge it in midair? No, you can't. I thought you could. Yeah, you see, now I have the power attack, so I can take down these shielded guys like that. Okay, so you can't charge the strikes. Yeah, that's a very cool move. It throws down a blast, pretty much. So you you can probably go like this. Bring the... Oh, bring that guy up. Or not. Let's try this again. Something like that. I'll get it. Oh, what I was saying earlier. You see, when you do this, the sword hits them and then brings them back to you. But, if you shoot the sword at them first and it sticks in them like that, if you press it again, see how it's changing inside of him? Like, when I press it, it turns into a demon, and then I press the other one, it turns into an angel. Like that. That means when you press it again... Oh, it disappeared. But anyway, that means when you press it again, bam, he automatically warps back at you. So what that one combo does is it ends and then plants a sword in them, so that the next time you do that, it'll just instantly come to you. Which is very interesting. It's definitely... Definitely a new addition that they didn't have in previous games. That's what I like about this Virgil. He's... I don't know what the word to describe it. He has more combos, but he's not exactly easier to play. I don't know. Maybe more accessible. That's the word that keeps floating around when it comes to the new DMC. Like, it's not exactly easier in a lot of ways, but it's accessible. Like, it's easier to move him around, but there's still the same amount of difficulty somewhere. I will say jump canceling is easier with him, though as I will demonstrate if I can. There's a lot bigger window than there is with Dante. So you can pretty much just jump cancel until the end. It takes some moderately qu uh, quick hand movements, so it's not exactly like you just lightly tap it. You kind of have to move your thumb back pretty quickly. But if you have your controller mapped to the uh, typical... Oh. <laughs> just slam the subway right into him. <laughs> I'm actually kind of liking this uh, Ghost Dante a little better. He acts a little bit more like the old Dante. I mean, the way he's uh, kind of a smart ass towards Virgil. Where are you, Dante? Well, the real Dante is up in the real world. The Dante that you're losing. <laughs> losing. <laughs> hallucinating in your crazy mind, he is, uh, he's somewhere else. Uh, we'll find him, though. Ah, oh, that's pretty cool. Shoot the platform and it appears. Oh, there is a lost soul over there. Alright, let's see how to get there. Maybe I... No, that's not it. Oh, here we go. I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, these are quite hard to reach, actually. Some of them, not all of them. The ones that are up in high places, pretty, uh, pretty out of reach. Oh, uh, yep, I failed that one. Oh, yeah, something I noticed, unlike the game itself, like with Dante, if you walk up to an edge in this one, you just fall right off. Like, I almost did right there, but I pulled myself back so I wouldn't lose health. But I was pretty positive that in Dante's part, you can't fall off ledges, or maybe that's only during fights. Because during fights, they like put up an invisible barrier so you wouldn't accidentally fall off. But that's actually taken away in Virgil's. And I wonder if they did that on purpose or if that's just something accidental. It definitely makes it harder, though. Alright, let's see. Ah, do a golden orb. Why not? It's always good to have a golden orb there. Just in case I die eventually. I most likely will not come back and play this on the higher difficulties. I might do one mission or so on Dante Must Die, just to show you the... Oh, Devil Trigger, hello. There we go. It is used to activate Virgil's special abilities. Abilities, I like that. Different abilities consume different amounts of the Devil Trigger gauge. Attacking enemies replenishes the Devil Trigger gauge. Hold X to activate the Spiral Swords. Oh, nice. Nice. I see they brought this back in a spectacular fashion. Oh, hello. Yeah, as you saw there, the reason they disappeared so quickly is I fired them off, which if you press X, it'll shoot the swords out. I don't know if it's just me, but it seems like his 
double triggers regenerating a lot quicker than Dante's does. If so, that's a good thing because a lot of people complain that Dante's uh, Devil Trigger generated much slower. Or much slower than previous games, not much slower than Virgil because they had no idea since he wasn't out yet. And slam the dirt ground. Yeah, it's going to get some taking used to. <laughs> get some taking used to. I just flipped those two words around. It's going to take some getting used to without having the Demon Evade and stuff like that. Which I think is something they did to make Virgil harder to play, so the advanced players will like him better. So there's no Angel Evade. There is the Teleport, which I guess is kind of the Angel Evade, but it just acts like the normal Evade that Dante does. It doesn't give you any longer range or anything like that. Like a longer invincibility frame, nothing like that. So it's pretty much just like Dante's normal dodge. And slam you up. Yeah, as you saw, I just unlocked this demon thing, so it's going to take some time getting used to how it attacks. But I'll get it eventually. Yeah, Virgil has pretty much retained everything he's had from the previous game, so if you can think of a move that Virgil has done before, I can almost guarantee that he does it in this one. Oh, another thing. I noticed while playing as Dante, there's something you can do if you hold Eric's, where I actually did this in the Bloody Palace video that I have. But if you're using Eric's and you charge up a level 2, all you have to do is just pull his back down and then use the level 2 and throw him up in the air, and he literally cannot fight back. And that's something Virgil can't do, so that will make him tougher to fight, especially when he's raged like this. You yeah, actually have the. Uh, I can't remember what the name Rapid Slash. I just saw it in the corner. The Rapid Slash in this. I have it upgraded now to where I can dash through enemies when I use it, but this guy cannot go through because he is pretty big. Now you can somewhat go through him, but it actually goes around him. Alright, now he's dead. Time to move on to the next wave. Oh yeah, but as I was saying before I unlocked Devil Trigger, I definitely won't come through and play through here on a higher difficulty completely, but I will come on to probably mission 5 or 6 after I'm done with this because I'm pretty sure those will be the hardest missions since they're towards the end and I'll come back to that when I'm playing on uh, Virgil Must Die and I can almost guarantee that there will be costumes that you unlock from doing Sparta I mean Son of Sparta and Virgil Must Die and stuff like that so I will definitely come back to show off the costumes and probably go into the yeah I'll go into the training mode too because there's a training mode specifically made for Virgil so I'll go into that as well so pretty much the only thing I won't do is go through another story completely because that'd just be too much of it I mean too many videos all right let's see my health is up now that's good I think the next thing I'm going to focus on in the shops is the devil trigger gauges oh he's coming after Dante <laughs> damn <laughs> oh my god he is just... ah. Now I really want that to be a costume. Dante looks really cool in that. He kind of looks like a hollow version of himself. Like anyone who blo uh, blotches... Ah, damn, I am too tired. <laughs> but anyone who watches Bleach will know what I'm talking about. Like the hollow version of Ichigo. It's kind of like the hollow version of Dante. That's what he looks like. And he looks pretty damn awesome, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to warp around here. Walk around there. Go see if the devil, devil trigger thingies. Oh, I can upgrade this now. Stomp. Oh, okay. So it's kind of like Dante's stomp ability. Nice, nice. Spiral swords, blistering swords. Quickly summons a series of swords that instantly launches out in succession at the enemy. Oh, that's nice. Storm of swords. Oh, this one that wraps around them and then closes in. So it's forward, forward, and then A and X. Virgil summons a series of swords that spiral around the enemy, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so I'll be upgrading those eventually. Alright, let's see. Devil Trigger, upgrade that. Yeah, I can only upgrade it once. That still helps, though. Can't wait for fake Dante to come back so I can kill him. Bring out these spiral swords.
Oh, okay, so pressing X doesn't make them disappear. I guess if you're just up against a strong enough enemy, they'll warp away faster. Because if they take a certain amount of damage, they'll disappear, so I guess the stronger the enemy you're standing next to, the faster they go away. And stab the ground. One thing I'm really looking forward to, and I really, really hope they have it, is the the Devil Trigger form that he used during the false fight with Dante, where he brings out the doppelganger. I can almost guarantee that they'll have him in this. So, if, of course, that's the one they show, so... The odds of him not being in this, the doppelganger, is very, very low. Especially since I think I saw a trailer that showed Virgil using that in the DLC. Almost positive. So yeah, that would be good to look forward to. I also hope there's an actual Devil Trigger form as well. Like, Doppelganger is just another one of his skills, and that the Devil Trigger is separate. And if that is true, that makes me wonder what the Devil Trigger will be. And hopefully there's a Super Virgil, like there is with Super Dante. If you beat it on Dante Must Die, you unlock Super Dante. Hopefully the same applies for Virgil, because... That would also be fun. You'd have <laughs> infinite summon swords and infinite devil trigger. So it'd be more than just having infinite devil trigger like Dante has, because he actually has separate abilities. Also like DMC3, because he also had the spiral swords in that too. And they used up devil trigger. Although he never had doppelganger. That was Dante's ability. I just fell to my death again because... Virgil does not have double jump. His double jump is the trick up like it is in the other games. Which I don't use as I don't use that as much as I probably should. He also has trick down too, and then he has the warp in other directions. So yeah, he's almost identical to how he was in DMC3. Other than the new move sets, obviously. He actually plays better in my opinion. Because even the most top tier players in DMC3, Virgil only had about five or four standard combos that he had. Maybe seven, I don't know. I didn't count. It was definitely a lot less than Dante had. And now that Dante has eight weapons at his disposal in this game, it makes Virgil able to use even less weapons. Oh, hello. Yeah, I don't really think they'll have any... Well, soul here. I don't really think they'll have any separate weapons for Virgil. I'm pretty sure it's only going to be Yamato with those two forms. But even then, that'll still be enough to uh, suffice with. Because pretty much I only use three weapons anyway when I play as Dante. I just use Eryx, the uh, Osiris, and Rebellion. So using three weapons is not that bad in my opinion. Technically it's only one weapon because that's all just Yamato. But they probably did that as a way, because that's Virgil's sword, so I guess they didn't want him using swords that he probably wouldn't use, so they just stuck to Yamato to be safe. Although Gilgamesh would have been a nice choice. Because they have the kick from it, like you see right there. And that's the kick from, oh not Gilgamesh, uh, Beowulf. That's what it was called in DMC3. Wait for the next big crowd of enemies and use the spiral swords again. Yeah, that's something I never used in DMC3, but I might use it now. Just jump cancel him to death. Yeah, it activates the same way you hold down X. Whoa, I am getting a lot more... Yeah, I was having a big issue getting my style meter up with Virgil, because he doesn't have a lot of cheap attacks like Dante does. Like Dante, you just do a Demon Evade and then use the Eric Stomp in midair and bam, triple S rank. Depending on how many enemies there are. If there are only a few, then you probably won't be able to do it. But with Virgil, there's a lot less of that, so you really have to use skill if you want to get the triple S up. And slam the ground. Alright. Time to bring my swords out again. Will you knock it off then? Oh, this is getting a little tough. <laughs> yeah, he definitely plays a lot different than Dante. It's, 
it'll take people a lot of getting used to. I've played the first mission, I think, three or four times, and then I've played the second mission two times, and it's it's still taking some getting used to. See, the demon attacks are slow, like you would expect. Not as slow as the... Well, it might be as slow as the Arbiter. I'm going to do it again. Yeah, it's definitely as slow as the Arbiter. Oh, okay. Fell off the edge. <laughs> I'm trying to see if it has any pause combos. Yeah, not that I can see it. I think it just does three standard attacks. That's another thing that I like about having just Yamato and neither of the weapons. It gives Yamato a ton of combos. Like in DMC 3... And in DMC4, if you play as Dante with Yamato. But in DMC3, with Yamato by itself, not with Alistair, I think was the weapon. <laughs> he just flipped him off. No, it was Force Edge. But if you had Yamato and Force Edge, you could do more combos. But Yamato by itself in DMC3, you could only do... I'm almost entirely positive you can only do three combos with it. Three of the standard combos, not one that you make up with jump canceling and all that. But now you have a lot more than that. Oh, almost fell off there. Yeah, and even just keeping Virgil with three weapons keeps him up with the previous Virgil, who only had three weapons as well. And technically that was only... Well, I guess it was kind of three weapons, because one of them was Yamato and Force Edge, which I kind of count as just Yamato with an attachment on it. And then there was Beowulf, which was a completely separate weapon. Oh, looks like he's about to end Dante here. Back into the drawing style. Oh, I've been waiting for this. All right, so uh, oh, you, you stabbed him with Dante's own sword. I think it's the second one. Alright, so Imaginary Dante is now dead. And Virgil gets one step closer to insanity. Alright, I cannot wait to see how this DLC gets later on. If that's any indication, I cannot wait until later on. I have no idea what's ahead, but if I see Sparta, I'm going to lose my mind. Because you'd never see Sparta in anything. You see him as a costume, of course, but not as an actual person. Alright, there was uh, Mission 3. I'll be back with Mission 4 in probably 30 minutes, 40 minutes, I don't know. Maybe I might upload it tomorrow, just because of the amount of time it takes to upload these videos. Alright, well, I will see you then.